A lot of our favorite stories have unlikely heroes. I love telling people how some of our greatest insights into life on this planet have come from studying these unassuming little lizards that we call anoles. An anole is typically a small lizard. They weigh a few grams, maybe uh, four inches long. If you ever get a chance to meet one up close and personal, they're surprisingly charismatic and cute. A lot of people are somewhat squeamish around reptiles, um, but these lizards are really, really beautiful. There's a lot of color diversity, there's size diversity, there's shape diversity. There are 400 species of them. Some anoles live in trees high up in the treetops, and some anoles live on the trunks, and some anoles live on the grass, and some anoles live out on the twigs. It really is an explosion of diversity in this group of animals. Um, it's one of the things that makes them so intriguing. They have this dewlap, which is a throat fan that extends out underneath their chin, and it's very brightly colored, and different species have different colored dewlaps. And they'll extend them and they'll do push-ups when they see other males or when they see females. So a male that display is basically telling the females, I'm here and I'm available. And the more he does that, hopefully the more females will respond and say, yeah, maybe we would like to mate. When two males confront each other, they start displaying at each other, doing push-ups and sticking out their dewlap. If that doesn't settle the dispute, the conflict then escalates into a violent battle. Another distinguishing feature of anoles is that they have enlarged toe pads that help them cling to smooth surfaces. Line up the toe pads. Zoom in. You can see the claw, the end of the toe. And these enlarged scales on the toe pad here are lamellae. Each one of those lamellae have millions and millions of little tiny hairs called setae. And it's those setae that adhere to surfaces to generate clinging force. If it's got toe pads and a dewlap, you've gotten a knoll. If it's got just toe pads, it's probably a gecko. And if it has just a dewlap, it could be a number of other things, but it's not an anole. So if it's got those two things, that's how you know it. Anoles eat anything they can get in their mouths. Mostly insects, but they'll also eat fruit, nectar, vertebrates, even other anoles. Some are widely foraging, going around looking for prey. Others are sitting and wait predators. So there's a lot of diversity in every aspect of their biology that we can study. Often when I'm talking to friends and family about my research, their first question is, well, why, why are you studying these lizards? Why do you care? The reason I study lizards is not because I love lizards, although I do, but it's because lizards are a great model organism to understand evolutionary principles, how evolution works. A lot of what we know about both ecology and evolutionary biology has come from studying anoles. Recently, there's been a real surge in studies uh, that use anoles. They extend into all other fields of biology, the biology of invasion, uh, developmental biology, endocrinology, conservation biology. I think anoles are an attractive system to study because they are abundant in many areas. They're also really easy to observe in the field. They are distributed on over 7,000 islands in the Caribbean. And each of those islands is like an individual petri dish where experiments have occurred. It makes for a really powerful natural laboratory for understanding how the process of evolution plays out. I tell my students that any study is more interesting when it's done on an anole. So I welcome everyone to studying anoles. There are plenty of anoles to go around. Whether you're 
uh, a biologist you know, who's been studying animals for decades or whether you're you know, a child you know, just running around your backyard. Anoles, they just offer a point of, of connection. They're different enough to be intriguing, you know, but not so different that you can't relate to them. They're like right in that, that Goldilocks zone. <laughs> In these videos, you'll see researchers using anoles to tackle many of the big questions in biology, from ecology and evolution to physiology and behavior. A lot of my work has focused on one particular question. When you start with the same environmental conditions, will evolution produce the same result time and time again?